welcome as we begin our new episode of of Masters of Dread, our Ravenloft campaign, ongoing Ravenloft campaign. Uh, before we get started, we're going to do some quick introductions. Uh, the first person we're going to introduce uh, will be our, our number one player, our first player right below me in the black shirt. Oh, you've got a fancy shirt. It's a rolling with yeah. advantage shirt. Look at that. He's got the it's, merch, it's, folks. It's a reach out thing I did for charity. <laughs> Evidently, this guy, it was... I felt we, bad for we, him. Oh, thank you, thank you for supporting the channel. <laughs> so he's oh, rolling. Was it you? <laughs> oh, it, oh, it was me. Oh. Right, right. So he's yeah. wearing the rolling with advantage oh. shirt. All right. So, 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 who are you, and who are you playing today? Uh, my name is Danny. I play Durandal, the Dampier Swarm Keeper Ranger. Yes, and I'm having a blast with it. So it I, I'm kind of the Count combo. Chocula of the group. <laughs> And Wes is more like the Frankenberry. Spoilers. Um, Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. yeah so. um, all right. And below you in the camo hat and headphones we have. Hi, I'm Wes. Uh, get the merch from Trevor so he doesn't end up playing D&D in an alley with some rats. Uh, <laughs> leading a campaign. <laughs> I play Ziv, the wild barbarian, wild magic barbarian. And uh, yeah have some fun that's it that's it um all right so let's see and then we have a our, our guest player who made his first appearance last week and he survived so he gets to come back uh so down the very bottom at a different location he's on the road gaming with us uh and in the last player please introduce yourself uh hi hello everyone uh my name is brian i'm playing gazmir um our favorite celestial warlock uh, he's a deep gnome, and um, he's looking to uh, have some fun with his uh, newfound friends. That's right. All right. So as we dive back in, oh, and the last introduction is uh, me. I'm, my name is Trevor. I am the, the DM storyteller guy uh, for Rolling with Advantage, and we thank you so much, uh, everyone, for coming in and following us. And uh, if you have uh, just kind of checking us out for the first time, you can catch up on past episodes at Rolling With Advantage YouTube channel. You can also follow our podcast, uh, Rolling With Advantage, which you can download pretty much everywhere. Um, and then also we play live on Twitch, 8.30 on Monday nights. And with that, we are going to dive into our latest episode of Masters of Dread. Uh, we had a week off and now we're all ready to, ready to go, which gave me an extra week to prepare uh, how to kill everyone. It's going to be great. All right, so as we dive in tonight, uh, we thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, and now it is time to begin uh, Masters of Dread. So as we do that, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to play our tavern music as we return to the, 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 our favorite tavern, the Troll Skull Manor in Waterdeep. And as we enter the, the, the manor and we, we go into the, the tavern itself, um, you look and you see a very familiar sight. You see all the same people coming in. You see a few new faces coming in um, as our, our, our resident bard and the Marcus Madmore, the marvelous Marcus Madmore, is there and he's, 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 he's inviting everyone to come in and they're they're getting to, ready to serve the dinner and, and they've got wine. Uh, and you see Marcus uh, in, a, in, a, in a good mood tonight. Uh, in previous weeks, he's been a little nervous, but tonight he seems excited. He seems jovial, and uh, you see him uh, reach out and goes, "Oh, oh, Ghost and Bela, please, please, come on in, come on in, and enjoy." And I see, "Oh, Headstone, you're here as well. Please, 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 come on up. Uh, have your seats. Uh, we've already prepared your food for you. Thank you so much." Uh, and as he he goes around, he greets everybody, um, and as he does that, you you see that he's talking what looks to be to a third person uh, standing next to him. But you don't see a person itself. He's sitting there almost conversing in the thin air. And as some of the people are kind of curious, he reach over and he, and he goes, oh, yes, yes, of course. And he seems to be taking notes to someone in the ether or a spirit or something. But as he stands next to the fire, the earth, you see that he's actually conversing with someone who is not there. Uh, and, well, some people may think that he's crazy. Uh, this seems in line with what he has told before, he's given clues to how he learned the story, how the story that he's telling is not his own, and it kind of goes into the fact that someone from the other, maybe in an, who was already passed, is telling him the story. Uh, and as he kind of collects his final notes and everyone is hit at the seat uh, getting ready for dinner, uh, he looks about the room and he goes, ah, oh, yes, well now uh, it is time uh, for us for us to begin and with that um he looks in the back and the bards in the back they, they, they begin to slow their 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 instruments down to, to a lower volume 
and he goes, oh, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, it is time for us again to 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 return to Harakir. And with that, uh, he pulls out this orb, and as the orb begins to grow uh, it, it, it yellow and gold in color, it gets larger and larger. And as it gets larger, everyone in the in the tavern begins to peer in and see uh, this 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 desert oasis. As it as it's kind of like you see the the sand kicking across. You see these travelers uh, moving um, off of their their camels. Uh, moving across, leaving like an oasis, like a watering hole, and moving out into the distance. Uh, and in that, uh, we see uh, two camels. And we also see a rider on a horse as the three uh, people are traveling across the desert of Harakir. And that is is where uh, we will begin things uh, tonight. And as we begin to move, uh, we go back into the map, we see the world of Harak here, and as we left our adventurers last week, they were just outside the city of Muhar, which is here, uh, where I am peeing in the map, and uh, they are moving across and leaving the oasis and heading north to the very edge and the very border of this world known as Harak here, and they're heading to something called the Bent Pyramid. And as uh, they've been traveling for several days and they are fully rested and, and recovered from their last encounter, uh, with the undead uh, servants of, of Octopot, the pharaoh who is the god of the dread lord of this domain. They travel north to the Bent Pyramid, and as they do that, uh, they are in search of a legend, a lost champion that, uh, that Gazmir, the gnome, seems to know more about uh, this tale of, of some lost warrior of light uh, as they are, are going to travel uh, to what is possibly... Uh, his last, uh, his remains, possibly. Uh, and as we do that, uh, we, we follow in and we see the three of them traveling. And as they are traveling, we see uh, ahead of them uh, riding a black steed uh, that seems to have magic horseshoes that kind of carry the steed across the sand but doesn't actually touch the sand. Uh, we see Durandal, our Dampir, uh, looking about, a uh, cloak pulled hood over, as the as the, the the sand is kicking across the the, the 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 desert and it's kind of brushing across his face, um, this is where we pick up the scene. So with that, Durandal, as you were making your way across the desert, is there anything that you would like to do? Um, definitely want to, um, uh, you know, just be on the lookout for for anything that might be chasing us or anything in the. Uh, I'm just on alert for baddies. Gotcha. Okay. So you're just, you're kind of scouting ahead. Uh, the one thing that you notice about this is that there's this, this ever present mist that kind of you see far in the distance. And no matter how far you've traveled over the last few days, you don't ever seem to get closer to it. You can see it in the distance uh, as, as the kind of the sun gleams through, but you see this mist. And no matter how far you travel, it just seems to always be this wall in the far distance as you travel. And that is something that has perplexed you of trying to get measurement of like, direction you know uh the other thing that has bothered you is you have not seen balthazar or magdalene uh, that mysterious individual and his hellhound that uh, you had traveled with before was supposed to be waiting for you outside of muhar but it's been several days traveling and you have not seen or heard for him and you don't know if that's comforting or or a problem ziv probably finds it pretty comforting um and as you do, you kind of look back, and we see we see Ziv, this large individual with the giant blade uh, t attached to his back, sitting atop a camel. So you have a large individual on top of an even larger animal. Uh, just pretty imposing scene as he is as he is following uh, in behind you. Uh, again, full desert robe. He's got the, the the scarf pulled across his face as he's trying to shield you know the the sand from kicking into his eyes to keep his vision up. And as he travels out, uh, he also has uh, the amulet of the gods. Uh, this 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 legendary artifact you seem to have found and seem to still know very little about as you travel across the oasis uh, and or, or past the oasis into the desert. And as we see that, uh, Ziv, is there anything that you would like to do as you're traveling? Um, I think I'm going to take some time to now with the amulet and the sword together try to converse as much as possible with the sword and glean as much information as I can as to the past behind the sword. So what would you like to ask the blade? Galvin the blade. Seems to be sentient, has a mind of its own. But it's well, also it's, very quiet. Yeah, if it's truly sentient, 
and it wants me to carry out its purpose. Tell me what it needs me to know. It keeps pressing you. And as you move forward, and as you keep traveling, you just you hear him say, yes, this is the right direction. Further north, north we must travel. To a sword, a few words. But at least you have words, which is uncommon for a sword. I, I sense we are heading in the direction of my former master. Hmm. I wonder if your former master has a auxiliary weapon that I might use if you were to go back to him. He was a master of many blades, if I recall. Lest I have to use my wit. I'm sure he will reward you. That seems nice. And then I'm going to go to the, uh, take out the box, the music box. Now you're able to pick out the silver mu music box. And as you pull that out, um, as you're looking at it, you're now safely able to hold it. It doesn't burn your flesh anymore. It seems that the amulet that you're wearing, it seems to be holding bay the slight case of lycanthropy that you had picked up uh, in a previous adventure. Uh, and as you're holding that, now are you actually going to just look at it? Or are you going to open it? Open it a little. And then after that, I'm going to peruse the book, my journal. From the past so you you open the music box and you hear the, the the serenade of the music kind of kick in and as you can listen to that um your mind drifts as you think of uh, the, your lost love Nalissa, and you you get saddened but also angered at the fact that you're separated from her you don't know where she is but she's being forced to toil in the desert and search for the dread lord's car I think I would want to take the time to read anything through the journal to see if I can find any noted note of her or anything that would be helpful to me from the the journal. Okay. So you pull out the Malagris's journal, the the your creator, who the mind is kind of trapped into you, and and there's some confusion if you are he is you or you are he, and the lines of that are kind of blurred. But as you open up and you read this journal, you you seem to rem get re recollection of actually writing this journal. Like you kind of have these visions of you actually sitting uh, in various places writing this journal, mainly in the study of your old keep. And as you're you're writing this, um, you seem to recall um, toiling with and, and arguing with uh, some dark spirit um, that was. It's, it's hard to remember, but there seemed to have been a dark spirit that you were arguing as if it was taunting you in some way and, and knowing that you couldn't succeed at what you were doing. And that bothers you because you remember there being this dark spirit or, or being, but you don't recall who or what it was. Hmm. I guess I'll ponder and ride. As you as you ponder that, um, you listening to your music box, uh, we we shift the scene back and we see uh, this this other smaller traveler um, bouncing up and down on his camel, uh, not not quite as gracefully as some of the others. Uh, but as he is riding at uh, Gazmir, as you as you peer across the desert uh, in your home world, uh, what is it that you would like to do? As you're kind of following behind this this giant of a, a warrior in front of you, Gazmir uh, notices. Ziv talking to something, which he assumes is probably the sword, which intrigues Gazmir to the utmost. So um, I kind of skip off and slide off the camel. I kind of run up beside Ziv and his camel. Excuse me, and I grab my shoes in my hand and I go, uh, "Ziv, do you mind?" And I have, and I'm holding my shoes in my hand. Do you mind, Ziv? I can't wear those. They're far too small. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I, I, I'm just trying to get a better look of our surroundings. Do you mind? Oh, I'll reach down and just scoop him up. So he, so as he grabs me, I kind of go on the top of his shoulder like a little rock gnome parrot and on the tallest thing, which is Ziv. And I just try to kind of gander around and, and, and peer out through the uh, through the desert. Okay. Uh, give me a, give me your investigation check as you're kind of looking out across the desert. There is so much... Um, sand getting kicked up. All you see is sand. 
uh, as you're looking about. However, it does a little concern you that, that basically to your right as you're looking out, which would be basically uh, cutting back east, uh, you should be able to see more than you can, but there seems to be a wall of sand uh, kind of like getting kicked up far in the distance. Now, you uh, you live in this area or this, this world, and you know that is not a good thing and that it's quite possible that that might be uh the hand of octopot as they call it uh searching the desert um i absolutely um uh as i was trying to look out i was kind of like looking down at his uh, at the sword and not really paying attention to what's around me and when i do finally see that wall of sand i relay that to ziv and danny or ziv and durandal okay and let them know uh, to the east, that, that wall of sand may be the Dreadlord's hand. We must make haste. Is it the yeah, same the one that kind of uh, attacked me? It looks very similar. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to uh, double time it. A little. At least I am. Okay. My, my horse doesn't have to run in sand like right. the plebeians. Right. Can just... <laughs> so you can just yeah. take off. So with that, uh, the three of you uh, cut a little north as you uh, want to try to evade that and uh, and begin to cut across uh, the desert. Now, we're going to do as a montage over the next several days as you're traveling. Is there anything that you guys want to do over the next several days as you're traveling to the Bent Pyramid and, and kind of trying to evade this, this storm that seems to be kicking up to the east? I would probably want to forge food for us. Okay. So over the next few days, you're going to be working on, on, on forging food. Go food ahead and water. Go ahead and give me a survival check uh, with advantage uh, to kind of cover the next couple of days. Uh, uh, 17, yeah. So without a problem over the next few days, you run into several of those cactuses that you ran into earlier. Uh, it's almost like it sponges the water out of the air itself. So it gives you plenty of things uh, to drink. And even though Ziv doesn't need it, uh, you and Gazmir do. Uh, so you're able to find that, and you're also able to find several small lizards that kind of skirt across, and you've kind of figured out how to get them and catch them. So over the next several days, between the lizards that you're able to kind of catch that kind of scurry across the desert sands, mainly at night, uh, they seem to be living under the sands and come out to forage at night, and, and there you are also ready to forage them. So you find food and you find water over the next several days, and you, you keep everyone kind of, of uh, in provision. Um, so that's what you're doing. Is there anything that Ziv wants to be doing over the next several days as we travel? I want to keep a lookout for any kind of bones or any kind of debris that could house buried treasure or buildings and use the magical awareness to see if I pick up anything. Very good. Okay. Um, over the next couple of days, you do manage to find, using your magic awareness... You do manage to find uh, what it looks to be the remains of... You, you get a very small hint of, of a magical presence uh, as you're traveling. Uh, you kind of go down a dune. This is about three days out from our last uh, conversation with Galvin. Uh, you get down and y'all see him do this. Like he just kind of scans the area. Uh, you dig through the sand and you find what looks to be the remains of, of possibly another adventuring party or, 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 or travelers. You're not really sure. Uh, as you pull up, you find, you know, a broken, like, uh, rusted out weapons and things, nothing of nature. But you do find two vials, uh, two potions uh, from them that you kind of pull out. They give off just the slightest magical hue that you were able to kind of pick up as you were kind of using your magic awareness from your wild magic barbarian ability. Uh, you do find a potion of healing and a potion of supreme healing. All right, is there anything that Gazmir wants to do over the next few days? Gazmir uh, would be very interested in finding out what his new allies, what they've, uh, the artifacts that they've come across, because for him, for them to have two of the pieces is just remarkable. Um, so he's kind of uh, going through their, like asking them about their adventures uh, in this land, the other uh, items of interest that they might've found. So, Durandal, is there anything from your inventory that you want to let him kind of peruse and look at? And... Well, first thing I'm going to pull out is this weird hunk of metal. And I'm going to hand it to him and, and say, you know anything of this? This seems odd. We've never seen any metal like this before. Uh, give me a history check on that. Uh, that will be for uh, Gasmir. 
all you know about this with a four plus two is six is that um, it, it's, it's, it's eight. My bad, doesn't matter. They they oh, call it eight. different things. Um, here they call it they call it Skyrock. Uh, it, it literally falls from the sky. Uh, it's extremely rare. Uh, you've only ever seen one other piece of this uh, is a collection in Muhar. Uh, the the priestess there uh, has a, has one of these in her collection. Uh, the one that Durandal has is larger and looks um, looks better than the one you've seen before. Uh, it, it has like a black uh, and like gray, like silver kind of streaks into it. Uh, but the legend behind this is that it, it, it fell from the star and it's almost, they, they see it as like a sign of, of, of the old gods or something like just because it, it seemed to have fallen out of the sky is the story. And I think I'll pull out the scimitar and just kind of twirl it around and, you know, like this is my most prized possession. And with that, um, give me an arcana check, Gasmir. Time to stop rolling fours. There you go. So you don't know everything about this other than you know that it is quite cursed. I kind of look at uh, Durandal, like as he tries to kind of hand it to me, I, I see him holding on to it a bit as I kind of just gently try to take it and look at it. With, with my knowledge of this stuff, can I offer him some help? Or would I know that this being a cursed item, this obviously would have a grip upon him? I think Gasmir should ask Durandal this directly. Randall, could you show me how to use this? I, I, I think this would be quite, uh, I, I, you know, being a, a small uh, stature of myself, I, I, I've always been uh, looking to uh, try and improve my, 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 my melee capacity. And uh, you are being such a great swordsman, which I've seen firsthand. Can you please show me, uh, maybe give me a quick lesson uh, with the scimitar? I suppose so. Seeing as how you can't really take it from me, but only for a moment. Only for a moment. Oh, but of course. But of course. I'll flip it over and hold it by its blade and offer it to him. You're not wanting to let go of the blade and hand it to him. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, on second thought, I think, Ali, you might cut yourself with this. And then... Now, Gazmir, uh, you don't blades, want to do that. These blades are actually s somewhat common um, in, this, in this realm. <laughs> so this isn't the first time you've seen this. Right. Oh, 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 of course. I, I understand. Uh, a, a man's only as sharp as his sword. Of course. Of course. Randall, maybe another time, um, I would definitely love to learn uh, the scimitar from you. Absolutely. Please, do I, sometime do I see street. this happening? Yes. I'm going to ride up alongside Danny and say, Randall, have you worn this necklace at all? Uh, once. I put it on before... I gave it to you. How did it make you feel? Peaceful. I'm not sure if it's still there. Could you put it on for a second? The amulet. Oh, yes. So, Durandal, you, you take, take the off. amulet. You you put it on. Uh, this this peace, this calmness returns to you. You feel like you did before, before being whisked away to Harakir. Uh, you just feel centered and at peace um and you no longer feel the anger and the irritation that you have uh been feeling recently would you let gasmir hold your sword for a moment absolutely and i'll hop off the the horse and be like let's have this lesson now you hand over the blade willingly and then i'll pull out my short sword and just kind of show him some techniques real fast oh 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 i see oh okay and i kind of like um like um Stumbly and awkwardly, uh, of course, you know, having the, uh, you know, uh, the, to the, the uh, tweetering toddler kind of uh, a gait. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I, I'm trying to weave this sword around and do my best, like, warrior impressions. And what I'm trying to do is just buy time um, for the 10 minutes that it takes for me to ritually uh, reduce the curse. <laughs> or, um, <laughs> All right. So that way, so, those feelings get so, hurt. You know. So you go through a a, a ten minute uh, form of of quite possibly the worst fighting we've ever Force. seen, uh, and yeah, and absolutely. both of you just kind of look at it. he just keeps going for ten whole minutes, like swinging the sword around in the desert. And Durando, you quickly realize this is a lost cause, but you're just kind of in, gonna let him have his moment. Uh, look at Ziv and say, Ziv. I ran across a monk who fought like this once. It was called 
drunken master seems to have perfected this with a blade. It's it's odd. He's just swinging wildly across the dunes, uh, and both of you just kind of look kind of odd and realize that he may not be the t most useful in combat if it came down to blades. Uh, but Go after a few the minutes, hamstrings. Right Go after the hamstrings. after a few That's minutes, uh, he. He hands you the blade back, uh, no longer cursed. It's just a plus one scimitar now. Ah. The the spirit of the vengeance has has subsided from the blade. And then I'll say, thank you, and I'll uh, say, <laughs> uh, amulet, please, Durand. Oh yes, here you are, friend. Uh, and thank you. you. The peace stays with you as you hand the amulet off feel enlightened i like our new friend you think he's rubbing his holiness is rubbing off on us i'm gonna look at gasmir and wink and then ride off i love that the uh, giant barbarian hat knew yeah, what's going him. on right <laughs> he's the gentleman you, okay. you don't want to make him mad like but he's the gentleman uh, I, so I picked up the job. so with that several days pass as you get to know each other as you're traveling across um, and, and you're really using Galvin as a guide uh, because um, it, it, you get to this point where you're, you're, all you're seeing is just dunes in every direction and this, this wall of mist that just seems to be ever out there. Uh, but each day and each time you're traveling, uh, even there's times where you get course correction where Galvin will just like nudge you and say, no, no, uh, a little more to the east, a little more. Yes, yes. Yes, using our Galvin positioning system. Yes, Galvin. <laughs> the position. GPS. We'll call it the GPS, yes. the Galvin positioning system. Um, he, he eventually takes you, and in the distance, uh, Durandal, you see it first in the distance. You see the the, 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 the very top, like the, the layer of what looks to be a pyramid, like the, the very edge of it uh, kind of coming off into the distance. And as you get closer, uh, the, the skies are, are darkened as you get closer, and you see uh, what looks to be this, this strange scene of... of of almost like magic gone awry, as you see uh, rocks and boulders kind of floating up into the in the in the, in the mid air, and you see this pyramid with this giant crack down the middle of it, and it is with that um, we we move scenes. And as you see this, you see whatever has cracked and whatever happened here. Uh, it seems to be almost been frozen in time as we see, still see the rocks and the boulders kind of floating about. Uh, you see what looks to be giant towers that were cracked and ready to fall, still still kind of hovering and, and hold in place. Uh, a, a slight light uh, appearing from the pyramid itself. And it's at this moment that, uh, Ziv, you look over and, and Galvin says, Stop. It's not here, but more to the east. Be wary. I'll relay that to the rest of the group. Well, it appears that Galvin Nuvi has directed us true. Is this the Bent Pyramid? Hey, Gasmir, you know this to be the place. Indeed, this is the Bent Pyramid. Hold. As uh, the three of you are kind of start moving off, uh, Durandal, with your keen eyes, uh, you look out in the distance, uh, you see that there seems to be uh, several things flying in the distance, large, uh, and moving against the wind. Uh, give me they a perception check. Me... Perception okay. Check. Against the wind. <laughs> We're flying against the wind. A 26! What do you see in front of you? Actually, more to your left, across, you see what looks to be, not one, not two, but three large um, very large, it almost looks like they're drakes or dragons, uh, but you can see through them, you can see through the rib cages as if they're some type of maybe undead, as they are flying, uh, across and moving uh, towards the pyramid. So basically, if you're looking at the pyramid and you're moving off to the east, to the right, they're over to the left, to, to the west, as you are, as you're kind of, you see them as they're kind of moving in. Uh, as you look, you see that uh, the sand and everything is getting kicked up on the ground as well. And you see that you can't tell what it is, but there's something very large or a lot of something moving across the sand as well. Uh, kind of under them? Yes. With uh, them? 
something's kicking up the sand, uh, moving, uh, running. Well, friends, seems we have skeletal dragons approaching. And That's worse than regular dragons. Yes. Um, I suggest if it's not too dangerous, we find shelter or hide. Uh, I'm going to ask the sword how far, because we need to find cover. Oh, not far. Not far. The temple of my master is close. All right, it's time to book it. Let's double time. Okay. Um, with that, as the three of you uh, begin to double time out of this area, can each of you give me an animal handling check? Uh, as your steeds are kind of uh, a little nervous. Uh, Durandal, <laughs> you can roll with advantage because you're riding a steed that knows you. Good. I'll need that. 12. Ziv, you are fine. Your animal handling of eight is totally fine. Uh, and and, okay. and Gazmir, you fine as well. All three of you are able to, to, to keep your animals uh, kind of kind of pulled together uh, as, as the three animals like, kind of move and you, you see uh, you kind of move down this ravine. As you move down this ravine, you see what looks to be several charred remains of, 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 of skeletal remains. It looks like they've been burned. You see like large pile of ashes with like bone fragments sticking out of it. As, uh, as you kind of move forward down this path, you see what looks to be a, like a, a gate or an opening of, of what looks to be like a, like a temple opening. But in front of you, you just see just, just pa- mounds and mounds of, 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 of charred bone. I'm going to turn on my magical awareness for a bit on the way up to this. Okay. As you move up, as you see uh, this, this, this opening, it's like these pillars almost broken out. Um, as you get closer, one thing that you notice, and, and Gasmer, you've never actually seen this before. Um, the architecture of these pillars as you get closer is completely foreign than anything that you've seen in Muar or even any of the ruins that you've seen as you've traveled in. It looks um, extremely well-crafted, but also just very different. We rode past the the bent pyramid. Yes, you have this bio right. behind you. Okay. Okay. Uh, as you were doing that, um, Ziv, you've got your magic awareness out as you're kind of looking about. Uh, give me a uh, investigation check. Um, I'm going to use um, what is that thing called? Knowledge of the past. Knowledge life. from past life. Okay. So that is an eight plus twelve. Ah, twelve. All right. Um, you look over, and in one of the oh, there's supposed to be a d six. <laughs> oh yeah. Much better. Hey. All right. So you got a six plus two is eight, and then a, you rolled a d six using your knowledge of the past life, which is your reborn uh, lineage ability. Uh, that'll get you all the way up to a 14. So as you're walking, as you're kind of riding the camel by, you look and you see all these these mounds and these these like burned up, uh, like skeletal remains. Uh, what you do look over, you see something that looks odd as you look out and you see what looks to be the statue uh, of a warrior that looks kind of like, no one would make a statue like this. Uh, it, it's kind of broken and kind of kicked over like an action pose as it's laying over. And you see that like part of the leg seems to be broken off and almost looks like gnawed upon. Gnawed upon. Is it, is it burnt as well? No, it is not Statue. burnt. Um, Are there? Survival check? Uh, yeah, you may. Uh, you look about and you do see uh, several um, tracks moving about. Uh, it's tra- a twenty-one. <laughs> it's a twenty-one on your check. Um, you see uh, what looks to be a, a lot. Maybe it's hard to tell. Twenty, maybe thirty different sets of feet uh, moving about. Very large feet, uh, clawed feet. We have uh, some type of swarm of toothy monsters about, my friends. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm assuming oh, Galvin is urging us into the temple, right? Yes. You, 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 it is, you sense urgency coming from him. Also, as you go. get closer, uh, the blade itself seems to be lighting up. I, I've never seen uh, engineering as, as brilliant and as pure as this. In all my years of, of, of tomb raiding and, and robbing and, and terrorizing the, 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 uh, the Dreadlord, I have never in my time come across engineering as this. This must be a temple of the old gods. Is the sword telling us to go, as if? Yes. What does we the sword say? Quickly. Let us make a Gasper, as you get closer, you look at the these pillars we'd be seeing made of some type of like alabaster stone or something. Uh, they're also polished. And it has weathered the, the sands of time. In fact, give me a history check as you get closer to the pillars itself. You would date these pillars uh, anywhere from four to 5,000 years old, but they seem almost pristine in condition and how it was made. Not, not touched by the, uh, you know, eroded by the sands or the winds. Right. And, and, you, and you described all this broken body and, and, and burnt um, bones and stuff strewn about the temple area. Yes. And none of, uh, and none of the pillars or any of the stonework show any fire black, that they're just kind of no. shiny and look. None at all. Okay. The only thing, not even the stones around you, only... Only the skeletal remains and, and the, the dust and everything that's laying about seem to be uh, burned. Like, this excites Gazmir so much that he almost forgets to cast Armor of Agathis. But I'm going <laughs> to cast that as we start. I, you, you, you see the little guy? I, I stand up on the forward hump, and as much as I can, I'm just beating on the back of the neck of this poor camel, which can't feel anything. He right. doesn't feel it, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm making him go faster as we can. Okay, as you uh, pull the camel up, uh, Durandal, you look over in the back. Uh, whatever is out there has reached the, the, the temple and seems to be, uh, you, they're circling the temple. And you also hear uh, the thundering, uh, what seems to be the hooves or feet of, there's a whole lot of something at the temple, at the, at the, sorry, at the pyramid behind you at this point. Friends, at the pyramid. Three riders are approaching. The wind begins to howl. So, is, is the gate? Are the gates on the temple big enough to take the camels inside as well? Yes. Let's okay. make our way and open them. Okay. Uh, you go. The doors are already open. They are wedged open, probably six feet apart. It'll lead on through. Um, I'll go first with the sword and the amulet. All right. So you will have to dismount. Yeah. Ziv. So you dismount. You know, you've got the sword drawn as the light uh, emanates. Um, as you walk in, uh, your, your foot, your boot goes against the ground itself. Uh, you you feel this 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 warm tile uh, beneath your feet as you step in. As you look about, there's this giant statue uh, in front of you. Uh, and and as you look up at the statue, there seems to be a little bit of, of steam coming off of the eyes of the statue itself uh you look about and you see several burned up uh skeletal remains uh in the lobby itself but the galvan the blade says oh yeah, we are safe here the sword assures me we're safe i, I look at durandal doing the light <laughs> chuckles i'm in danger it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. As uh, the rest of you move in, uh, you dismount your your mount, so you get into like the foyer of this temple. As you begin looking about, uh, the only dust that you really are seeing in here are that what looks to be the burned remains of of these skeletal remains that are kind of kicked around. And with that, um, we are going to change the scene as uh, we are officially uh, in the crawl. So you walk in, as you walk in, uh, the, you see the first statue before you with the eyes. You see a second statue uh, next to it. Uh, this statue looks very different. 
uh, than the one next to it. The one next to it looks like a looks like a like a like a man standing there um, with like giant armor, kind of looking about. Uh, you also see like maybe like these like like sewn into the back or like sewn into the back itself, like these angelic wings coming off of the man. Uh, the person standing next to you looks a lot bigger and bulkier. Uh, the head of this being is is missing, uh, but there is a brazier between them, and, and the brazier uh, as you get in it, it, it lights, and you almost sense that. Was if you sense that Galvin may have actually lit the the brazier itself? I'm going to say to the sword. All right, my friend, we're here now. What? Oh, we must. This is the temple of our, of, of our Lord. We must. We must find him. I I do not know the way. I only know that this is where we should be. But I will tell you, nothing undead is allowed in this this place. I'm glad I don't fit that bill. Technically, um. <laughs> I'm gonna look to my left from the. I'm gonna peer into the room so I can see the whole room. Okay. Uh, you should be able to move your token. Okay. Uh, as you enter this room, uh, what you see is uh, you see a, a pillar that's been broken off and laying in the middle of the room, uh, and also as it's stretching out about twenty feet uh, across, uh, all the way down, uh, you see what looks to be like a these steps that go off to the left or the right and kind of cut around and in the middle of those two of uh, those two stairs uh you see another statue uh this statue looks to be of a different individual uh than what you saw before uh this individual it looks like it's 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 wearing some type of darker robes uh and is it is carrying a, a pair of daggers friends are you opposed to going this way let me peer in the other room just to see what we have. Make an appraisal of the situation. As uh, as you look forward, uh, you see a statue in this room as well. Uh, the statue looks different than the one you saw before. Uh, this statue uh, is, is, is actually like, it's, it's really weird. You can't tell if the base of it is missing, but it's actually like, hovering in the air where it's not actually standing on anything uh this is under the robed individual statue and uh what you see is a is is a staircase leading up uh and then at the far end another uh, torch lights up as you enter the room itself illuminating the room uh there looks to be a a turn uh to your left uh down another corridor and there's possibly another uh, turn uh, at the very end. So there's two left turns out of this room, uh, one closest to you and one further down the hallway. Nothing lit up in the room I'm in? Uh, no. Well, then I'm going to Danny's room. Okay. Uh, as you go, you see what looks to be... Uh, let me see. You see uh, what, the scene I just explained, uh, the statue, and you see the brazier uh, lit down the way. Uh, I'm going to say, guess, I don't know if this place would have traps, but would you be able to detect them if you could? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm great at that, <laughs> uh, which is a complete lie, but we're going to do it anyway because we, we feel like we're destined to be here. So, um, we're going to uh, move and go through our squares and kind of nimbly cross through the legs of, of our big giant compadres. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to come up here and um, I have real I believe I have a pretty good dark vision. Um, and then I want to make it a, a an investigation on the um, floating um, um, the floating um, statue uh, in front of us. And I also. Um, so you said that there were torches lit, correct? Yes. So am I assuming that? Um, can I assume that maybe this was uh, lit uh, lit by somebody? No, or it it, it it seemed to have been lit by the presence of you, the you being here. Okay, of the sword. Okay, gotcha. You, oh, that's even creepier. Oh man. Okay, so let's do an investigation. Uh, and I'll look for traps around the, uh, the base of the floor. As you and, look uh, at, around... I'll pause. I'll only pause you. As you look at the statue itself, give me a religion check. 11 so that's a 7 plus 4 is 11 uh this statue looks very familiar and as you look okay. at it you, you kind of lose yourself in a moment and and you sense uh the presence of of your patron 
as you look at it and you realize that this might be the river spirit. Immediately upon thinking that, Gaz, um, so I just start walking up to the, immediately and I want to touch it. Um, you reach up and you, and you touch it, you feel a warmth uh, come over you. Um, you also sense that while you still have your armor on, um, you seem to regain some of the, your power and uh, mechanically your spell slot has been re replenished. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's sweet. I, I look at, I turn around and I look at Ziv and Durandal and I go, this is it, this is it. This oh, you, you're, doing the, you're doing the river god. You're doing the river god, yeah, the river god motion. <laughs> As yeah. he crosses his hands across his face, it's the river god. Uh, Durandal, what do you want to do? I'm going to say, companions, gather round me. I'm going to uh, cast Pass Without Trace. Okay, you cast Pass Without Trace. Um, everyone's footsteps uh, begin to soften as you now all get plus 10 to your stealth check as you move about the, the temple. <laughs> Ziv, what do you believe? Do you believe we should turn left here? Or do you believe we should go straight? Both braziers lit. I would, if one of them is leading up and the other one is leading in, I think I would rather go up first because if anything were to be in here, to come in here from the outside, we'd have a more defensible position. Okay. Sound logic. So with that, I'll, I'll lead on. Okay. Uh, you continue to move on. You can continue moving. As you make this turn, um, you turn and you look. Uh, give me a quick perception check. Ah! Uh, we ain't no. seen. Exactly. Uh, you continue moving forward. I'm going to peer down this hallway. Just look down it. Uh, you move and you peer in. Uh, Ziv, as you turn in the darkness, uh, you see what this would be the shape, uh, some, some big hump shape in the middle of the room. Um, and in that, you see these two uh, white lights kind of like peer open as these two eyes open up. As you look at that and you see these two light eyes open up in the room, give me a constitution saving throw. Uh, 21. Uh, you see it, you, you kind of feel your, your all of your muscles in your body freeze for half a second and you kind of pull back as you see uh, these large lizard feet kind of start moving towards you and the head of this giant lizard kind of come into the light as you kind of see it better uh, now that the, the light is cascading in. Uh, you see this large head and the, these eyes, where well, they were white at first, begin to grow like this green light uh, emanate from the eyes as he kind of like starts moving towards you. Uh, please roll initiative. Actually, I'm going to say, we got company! So what do you see before you is you see an eight-legged uh, blue lizard with these these red uh, like spikes coming off the back, almost like a stegosaurus, as he kind of moves through his tail, squabbing back and forth. Durandal, you you hear Ziv uh, kind of call out as he kind of falls backward. You kind of look, you just see the back of him as he's kind of on the, in this corridor. Uh, but okay. what would you like to do? Actually, quick, give me a perception uh -huh. check. You see another one is peering around the corner. So we've got a couple of these eight-legged lizards with his big tail kicking out, these green eyes kind of flashing, big, like, snarling teeth as he's coming towards you. Uh, now that you see the second one lurking close to you, what would you like to do? I'm going to fall back and okay. whip out my bow okay. and shoot at it twice. Absolutely. Ah, yes, our adventurers are level five. They can shoot things twice. All right, so finally, you haven't shot your bow in a long time. Uh, you should take your first bow shot of an 18. Uh, that will hit for eight points of damage. Your second attack of 26 will hit. You quickly fling two arrows Ooh. into it, doing 15 total points of damage. Uh, they both pierce the uh, the scale of the lizard itself. Uh, you've got two arrows in either side of its shoulder. It's still snarling and coming towards you. Um, oh, hold on. Let's w let's let the bats do some damage. All right. As soon as you fire that se that second shot, uh, spectral bats explode out of your body and kind of move towards and uh, begin kind of harrowing and kind of biting and chewing at this this large lizard. Uh, and uh, you roll a seventeen. Uh, also, give me a nature check. Ooh. Well, our ranger know what he is dealing with. A ten. Yes. These are pretty common in your other world. You, you've heard tale of them. Uh, these are basilisks. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Don't get turned to stone is my, what I scream out. I will also make this my favorite foe. Oh, perfect. 
Alright, it uh it is your favorite foe. You take another four points of damage, that is twenty-one total damage. Also, as you peer and it looks back at you on your turn, uh give me a constitution saving throw. Oh lord. It's nice knowing you. Sixteen! You are totally fine. Again, you feel uh your your muscles kind of flinch up for half a second. You shake off whatever it is that it's trying to do to you, and you realize that its gaze is probably pretty dangerous. Uh with that we go to Gasmir. It is now your turn. What would you like to do? I'm going to uh, cast Blur. I'm going to move up here and climb on top of the statue. Okay. You can do that. The Basilisk uh, scurries out and uh, will go and take a bite. He snaps at you. You immediately like drop back and, and, and kind of deflect out of the way. Uh, you kind of use the bow to kind of move the head out of the way as it tries to bite you. Uh, its teeth kind of clenches down, and as it clenches down, it, you see some type of green, like, goo kind of come out of me of its mouth like it's saliva itself. Uh, and I believe that is going to be it for that one. Now, this other one's going to run up and try to hit uh, Ziv. Uh, 21 to hit. Uh, so it will attack and hit Ziv. It will do 2d6 points of damage. Now, this will be uh, 4 plus 3 is 7 damage. You're not raging yet, so that's full 7 damage. Uh, and then you also take poison damage as it bites into you. Uh, that is six uh, funny points. thing. Yes. I am poison resistant. All right, so instead of six points of damage, you'll take three points of poison damage. Ah, Reborn being resistant to poison. All right, so you took ten total points of damage there. All right, and with that, it is Ziv's turn. I am going to rage. Oh, and as you rage, the electricity begins to spark as your wild magic kicks in. Let's roll the wild magic table and see what he You know, does. this is the first time that I've looked that, that the rage actually does damage. Oh, it, it does. does. 1d8 just flat. Oh, well, there you go. I don't know why. Interesting. Until my rage ends, I'm surrounded by sparking electricity, not Ooh. what it says. Okay. And gain one bonus to AC while within 10... And while within 10 feet of me, all my allies gain one AC. All right. So everyone, so you get plus one to your AC and everything else around you does uh, friendly. Okay. Currently, so, they're not in the range. Right, but. right. But you're you're getting a bonus to your AC as, as you go into rage. All right. So that's the first, that's your bonus action. You go into rage. The electricity sparks around you, kind of giving you almost like a, like a, like a sheen around you to help deflect attacks. Uh, and now you have your action. So I get what? Plus two during my rage for damage, not for attack, right? Correct. What have you so that is plus nine plus nine a 16 to hit that will hit okay uh five plus four no no that will miss so your first attack will hit your second one will miss uh roll your 2d6 plus damage which is 10 10 damage all right so you you cut at it um the blade lands true on the first attack you cut part of its scale off uh you notice it's extremely thick and you thought you would hit it you hit it as hard as you could it just seems to be thicker than you thought it was uh and now it is uh the top of the round and as we get to the top of the round uh durand will give me another perception check oh good Out of the corner of your eye, uh, you notice that there is a, a crack right here. And out of that crack, you see these these large like uh, hands kind of cutting through, and you see this a third one emerge. Mm. Can I just yell that out to them? Yes. Okay. There's one emerging from the walls. Uh, you seem to kind of like, like, like crawling through, almost like 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 crawling up the wall itself, like like using its, its giant talons to kind of like spider climb in like a weird like like savage way. He's kind of crushing the rock under him as he's kind of crawling out and looking about. Uh, Durandal, at the start of your turn, uh, make a Constitution saving throw. As mm. it, this thing peers out and sees you, and you kind of lock eyes with it. Oh no. Uh, 19, you resist again. Uh, it is now your turn. What would you like to do? How? How? I saw this thing crawl on the wall. Yeah. Like on the wall. Yeah. Mm. Okay. How, how tall is this wall behind me? Uh, it's about 12 feet. All right. So if I 
were to move right now, it would get an attack of yeah, opportunity? It, it, would, it would snap at you, yes. Okay. I'm going to... Might be worth it. I'm going to run up the wall onto okay. the ceiling. So that okay. would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and okay. end up back here. Okay. So take its, uh, I guess, take its uh, attack. Right, so you run past it. It will try to snap at you as you turn around. Uh, it Does a 13 hit you? No. It snaps at no, you. No, basically you... I ran up the wall and then went on the ceiling, and I'm hanging from the ceiling upside down at it now. Let me look at something. Uh, what you see, yeah, you you look you kind of peer into the other room as you look into the other room. Uh, you see that uh, the the floor has collapsed in that room. You see uh, several like uh, like like timber or frozen or petrified wood in there. Uh, also at the bottom of that pit, uh, there seems to be some other things in there, but you can't quite see from your vantage point. Okay, well, I'll take my two shots then. All right, the you as it snaps at you, you kind of run behind it. Uh, quickly, you turn around, and it, you're so fast, it's still turning. You've got advantage on this attack. All right. Ooh. All right, so this is shot one. Uh, it's a 26. You're going to roll at 18 plus 8 is 26. That will hit uh, for four points of damage. Uh, make your second yeah. attack. Uh, on your second attack, uh, you roll a 2 plus 8 is 10. That arrow goes wide. Uh, but hang on, okay. roll with advantage. Roll with advantage. Okay, I didn't know if I got it on both. Yeah, you did. Uh, and your, your advantage shot is a 9 plus 8 is a 17, which will hit. And that does 9 points of damage, which is 34. Uh, it is your favorite foe, so roll another d4 damage. 4 and then a d6. As the bats continue to tear at it. Uh, 37 total damage has been done to it. Uh, so basically, you, I'm just upside down shooting you're, at it. You're now. upside down shooting. Your hair is kind of like falling, like going up to the floor uh, <laughs> as you're kind of taking your shots. The inverted matrix shot uh, that you're making with your bow. Um, as you do that, Gazmir, you see him run. You see the arrows kind of go into him. The bats are kind of flooring all around it. Uh, you look over your shoulder. You see the one behind you that snaps his head and looks at you. Make a constitution saving throw. Ooh, a natty! A natty. You look at it, you shake it off, and you know immediately that um, it just comes to that you and everyone, you need to avert your eyes. Ooh. So. Okay. So, um, Asmir, um, feeling the protection, um, sitting atop of his avatar... Um, of his true of the true lord of this one of the true lords of this domain um, swelling with confidence um, I'm gonna move towards um, Ziv here okay and not and uh, he can go ahead and opportunity attack me if he'd like to he will uh, 22 that's gonna hit but I'm blurred so it's gonna be a disadvantage I oh I have to roll it again okay 22. Oh, yeah, you got me. You All right, me. so uh, his bite hits you. That's going to do 10 points of piercing damage followed by 2d6 poison damage. Uh, 8. So 18 damage. Okay, so... Temporary hit points, and he takes yes, damage. Yes, I have 50... Right, so I have... Um, I had 53 total with the armor of Agathis. Okay. So we'll minus, we'll minus the 18 off that. Okay. Which should leave us with 35. Um, and then also, I believe he takes some damage uh, from striking me because I have the armor of Agathis on. Okay. How much is he? T how much? Uh, I believe it's 15 points of cold damage. Okay. Okay. So then there's 15 points of cold damage okay. um, done to him. And then uh, for my turn, for my action, um, I'd like to cast blindness upon it. Ooh. Okay. What do I got to say? Uh, it's going to be a Constitution 12. Hoping you choke. 
Hang on. I rolled a 12, and oh. I get a plus 2, so I'm 14. <laughs> it was a really good idea. That yeah, was a that really was awesome. that was a really good idea. All right. Blindness on a basilisk is <laughs> it's a very good play. All right. So that's your turn. Uh, okay. And with okay. that, it is their turn. Uh, this thing that just ran past you is going to try to run up and bite at you. Uh, it actually like runs and leaps and jumps on top of this little pedestal thing that is in front of you, like the next landing. Uh, his his two like four of his legs kind of make the landing. His other four legs are kind of holding him up. As he reaches out, he's going to try to bite at you. You do get a plus one to your AC because you're in the aura of Ziv. Um, I also are blurred. So I rolled a natural twenty, but because you're blurred, I get disadvantage and I rolled a three. So yes. I missed you. Thank you. Okay. Blurred. All right, All right, so here's the here's the thing, though. I don't want to be honest, but I have to because I love you guys. Um, I have to take a, a constitution check for the damage that I took from the basilisk yes, to see to see if my blur still oh, is no. up. So if it's not oh, up, yeah. you got crit. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, sweet baby G. Okay, so what do I have to beat, Trev? Oh, my goodness. I took uh, 20. I took uh, 18 total damage. So uh, I have to, what, beat him 18? Yeah. No, he had five temporary hit points. I don't think. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, fifteen. I had fifteen temporary. So hit he, you got to beat a ten. Okay, sweet. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. He did it. You, you held on to your concentration with that roll of nineteen, and the blur stays on. It bites you instead of a crit. It rolled a three and missed you. So you survive that math. That would have been uh, 8d6 damage. That would have been very bad for the for the warlock. All right, now as the... My southern, as my southern granny would have said, bless his little heart, okay? Yeah, Woo! right. All right, so now the one uh, in front of Ziv is going to make his attack. Uh, it's going to miss. And the one on Durandal uh, is going to turn and kind of run like kind of like kind of stomping through the the, the, the cavern to come back at you. He's going to stomp, uh, try to bite at you, uh, and he misses. Uh, with that, it is Ziv's turn. Can I make a bonus action of a potion? You may, but first, please make a Constitution saving throw. Continues to gaze at you. Woo! Rolling hot, sixteen. You resist the gaze of the basilisk. Uh, that's a twenty-two. It's a twenty-two. It's a twenty-two. All right. And with that, you may make a bonus action. I'm going to drink a potion of fire giant strength. Ooh! The potion of fire giant. Your strength is now twenty-five. So that means I get another plus two to hit and two to damage. I believe. Correct. My strength is currently twenty. Yeah, so it goes up to 25, so you get plus 2 to attack and plus 2 to damage. And it lasts for an hour. It lasts for an hour, right. Your muscles just okay. bulge out. Uh, there's actually like a little bit of flame coming out of your arms as you kind of get bigger. So you've got like the electricity, you've got flame coming out of your arms as the, 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 the strength of the fire giant courses through you. Um, this imposing gonna, monster gets even bigger. I'm going to tell... Uh, Gaz, whatever you do, don't get in front of me. And I'm going to pull my hat down over my eyes and just start wailing at this thing in front of me because it's a narrow hallway. All right, so you are going to avert your eyes. As you avert your eyes, you will be attacking with disadvantage. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to worry about the, the gaze. It's the trade. But I get a plus 11 to hit. You get a plus 11 to hit, right. So roll with disadvantage. All right, so instead of the 15, we take the 12, which is a plus uh, 11. It's still going to hit. Uh, roll your 2d6 damage plus 8. 8. Uh, so 6 plus 8 is 14 damage. You've done a total of 24. Now make your next attack. Uh, instead of the 11, we have to take the 9 because of disadvantage. Plus 11 is 20. You're still going to hit. Uh, it's so big, you're just swinging blindly and you're just hacking into it. Roll your damage, which is going to be another 2d6 plus 8. Snake eyes! Again! <laughs> Snake eyes! 34. Alright, uh, you're cutting it. You feel your blade hacking as you're just kind of like blindly just hacking in front of you. Uh, but you are connecting. Uh, with that, it is Durandal's turn. Alright. Um... 
I am going to, I guess, run above it again. Okay. Will he get an attack? Yes. E. Okay. I'll just. Um... And that's a bite attack, right? So. Yeah. Then fifteen twenty. Um. Yeah, I'll run over here. Okay. Take your shots. Uh, the first shot is a 12 that will miss. Take your... Oh, yours behind it is an advantage. So the 19 will hit. So that's going to be 10. Okay. Now he is going to make his attack here in just a second. We go ahead and do your attacks. And then a 23 uh, will hit as well. So that's another 8. So that's uh, 53 damage. He is going to bite at you as you run by him. Uh, does a... Does a 15 hit? Negative Ghost Rider. He the snaps at you. You run back. As you run back uh, over the shoulder, you take your two shots. You fire both of the arrows at the same time. Both arrows go. You do the legless double arrow shot as both of the arrows dig into his back. Uh, you seem to have cracked its spine with one of the arrows. It goes limp and falls to the ground. Yes. All right. I dig it. All right. We got one down. Uh, with that... It is Gasmir's turn. Uh, All right, so take your shot with Eldritch Blast. You get uh, two blasts, right? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. take so, first blast. Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, these are your two blasts. A 19 and a 17, they will both hit. Uh, so you hit both uh, with the attack. And yep. does each one push him back? Each one will push them back, yes. Each okay. one will push back, uh, I think it's five feet or okay. ten feet total. Okay. All right, you you slide him back across the road. Is the both the blast hit? Roll your damage. Okay, uh, that is going to be uh, eight total damage. Is there anything else you would like to do? Um, and then um, we are going going to move into the square of a uh, ziv so we're gonna ride on we're gonna climb the back of ziv and like be on the back haunch of him as he's just wrecking inside of this like phone booth okay um as you I as you occupy, all of this occupy. all of this happens at the same time you push those things back you turn as you turn to get on him your eyes connect with the basilisk so you just pushed across. Make a constitution saving throw. That is a, that is a pass. Ooh. 10 plus 2 is a 12. That is a pass. Because <laughs> the number to make is 12. <laughs> Better lucky than good. <laughs> so now right. we got we got Master Blaster runs border town going That's on it. over there. <laughs> Master Blaster is on the back over here. <laughs> All right. Uh, it is now the Basilisk turn. The Basilisk uh, that is on uh, attacking Ziv is going to make his attack. Uh, it'll miss. Uh, and then this one that just got pushed over um, is going to turn and run towards Durandal and try to bite him. Oh, good. Uh, 20 to hit. No. No, what? <laughs> the way you said that was so believable. All right, so here's yours. Uh, you have 10 points of piercing damage, followed by uh, five points of poison damage. As it slashes into you, it catches your arm. It rips part of your skin of your arm off. Uh, you feel this burning sensation as the poison goes into it. You're not resistant to poison or anything. I don't think you are. I don't believe so. I don't think so. We've got the between the reborn and the uh, the damp here. I'm not 100. percent Those are newer lineage races. I was made for this fight. You were. You were made. Con saves and poison resistance. <laughs> yeah, this is the best fight ever. <laughs> All right. With that, it is now Zip's turn. Gonna take another mighty two swings. And you will not be making a con save because you're just swinging blindly. Uh, we're not taking the 16, we're taking the 9, but with the giant bonus that you're getting for the swing, uh, deal 2d6 damage. Uh, that will be 8 plus 6, 14? No, 8 plus 8. 
Eight plus eight. Sorry, sixteen. All right, one more swing. Oh. Uh, again, that will hit. Um, this one, uh, you kind of. The first attack, you caught part of its head. The second attack, you know where its head is. You bring the blade back. You run the blade through its skull and you drop it. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the 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 uh, wrap that I have up for a second. See that there's no more in this room and kind of. You see, uh, back up. <laughs> you see a lot of uh, gnawed rock and stone in the room, but that's the only thing that you see. I'm gonna back up this way. Okay. Not looking directly at anything. Okay. You're just backing up. Just backing up. <laughs> so, out of the corner of my peripheral vision, do I see this thing is facing Danny? Yes. All right. I'm going to turn and haul butt that way. Okay. Until I get to here, and then tell Danny to stay on the ceiling so he's not in the way. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to pull as you're running, you're, back down. You're taking Gasmir with you as you're running. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to stay behind. <laughs> All right. Um, with that, we go to the top of the round. It's Durandal's turn. Um, Still hanging can from I the make, ceiling. Can I make two shots? I don't know. I know in past editions, it's like when you're in melee, taking shots is... It gets advantage remember. on you when it attacks. Are you in melee if you're on the ceiling and it's on the ground? Um, I'm going to say... Jumping at you? I'm going to say yes, because of that, of how big this thing is. Okay. Okay, well I'll um I'll sheath the bow and pull out the the scimitar. Okay. And the uh, gladius the short sword. Short sword. Yeah, gladius again. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Let me find it. Uh, thirteen. Actually, you're gonna roll with advantage because you're flanking it now. You have someone flanking it. There you go. Uh, doesn't matter. You miss the first attack. Misses. All right, here's the short sword. Uh, that's a 26. That is a 20. That's a crit. You rolled a crit. That's like a uh, so while you miss right. with the first attack, uh, you crit with that one. That's going to do 11 points of damage. And Did it then... already double that in that little background? Yeah, it got it. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to uh, hit with the bats. Woo! And oh, yeah. the bats move and start tearing at it. Hang on. And I'm going to make this guy my favorite foe. All right. That's 44 total damage. Uh, make a constitution saving throw as it peers at you. 13. Yes. 13. Oh, I'm clenched up like I'm playing Jenga. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's clenched up like he's playing Jenga. Y'all have passed every possible con save against these battles. You have not failed one. All right, Gazmir, it is your turn. I'm going to do the old predator turret gun, the shoulder gun, and I'm just going to pick up and point my head over and just put my point, my two fingers, and Eldritch blast the... Uh, there you go, I like it. Like, 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 I'm going to need a big backpack for you. <laughs> What's your character? <laughs> I'm just a shoulder cannon for the barbarian. That's my, that's my class. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, let's do that. Oh, that's great. Okay, here we go. Eldritch Blast. All right, here we go. They both hit. You, as the blade of the of Durandal, like, cr like rams the crit, kind of cuts its neck, it rears its head back. You take that moment. You take both your hands to blast out. Both the blasts hit the, the back of its neck, popping its neck, and then kind of falling over to the ground. Um, it is it is dead. You have defeated all of the Basilisk. And as the what? last basilisk drops, everyone does a, a sigh of relief as these things are going to bleed across the floor. We move to Durandal first. What would you like to do? Do they bleed? Oh, yes, they bleed. If it bleeds, I can bite it. So, yeah. I'm going to just take some bites out of uh, the three corpses and get some my uh, feedback. <laughs> just reach down. I don't down. even know. Is that kind of like cheating? Is that no, kind of cheating? No, no, no. You just reach down. You're like... Take it by the neck and just, ah, 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 and, uh, and and give it some dampier bite love. So uh, heal yourself. Up. I'm gonna put my hand over Gaz's eyes like this. <laughs> just don't look. Yeah. yeah. So I get nine. Yeah. Is that because you used it three times or just that's the? Well, there's three corpses. Okay. All right. 
See, I don't know. That's why I was asking. I don't want to like make it. No, no, you're good. So you you go and you feed on all of them, um, and you you heal yourself up. Okay. Um, Guess as, where, my friend. Do, as you're do you feeding, know if their eyes remain uh, magical. Um, that, that will be a nature check. Oh, it teetered on the twenty. It did. It, instead of a twenty, it's a two. Um, you, don't I mean, be, you don't You don't. You don't believe so, but you know that oddities like this are used by uh, alchemists. That might be worth something. Uh, Good thinking, D- Durandal. You might want to pop a couple of them in the bag. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm throwing them in there. Yeah. So you harvest uh, six basilisk eyes. So be sure to put that down on your on your list. You never know, you might get a use out of those. Uh, as he's doing that, uh, Ziv, is there anything you want to do? I want to peek in the hole where the one came from. Um, you look, and it looks like it's just like this little nook um, that it was tearing through. Um, and it, it does seem to kind of like a, a, a tunnel into uh, the next room, which would bring you here. Oh, what a lovely room of death I've discovered. <laughs> Uh, you you, you kind of crawl through this room. It goes about ten feet of tunnels. You kind of crawl through. Uh, you look down and you see how this room connects uh, to, to the north. Uh, as you look down, you see uh, several like like petrified pieces of wood in here. Uh, and what you see at the bottom looks to be uh, it looks like eggs. Oh, how many? Uh, there would be four. How far down is the floor? Uh, 15 feet. Oh, I can, I can right, jump easy, that. Easily, yeah. I'm going to go destroy them. Okay. All right, so you're going to go down there and crush the basilisk eggs. Unless we wanted to save one for some unknown reason, but I I don't want any more of these things out there. Uh, I, I'll, that's a hard pass for me, but, but thanks for asking. Tempting. I'm I'm gonna save one and make us an omelet in victory. <laughs> are we saving so, a basilisk egg or are we destroying them all? This is a yeah, I go, no 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 that's that's good eating. That's that's really good eating. Oh, hold on. Basilisk and so, eggs. Is, yeah, I'd like to take one of the eggs and uh and uh and use it uh and stow it away after, you know. He, I asked Ziv to please uh just save me one so that I can cook him uh my, my famous uh, avocado bacon omelet. Sure. Okay. I'm going to proceed to the other side and kind of try to jump, scale my way up. You, without a problem, you scale your way up. Um, You look, and what you see here is you see another path heading down, uh, but it looks to be a dead end. I can't see anything because of the way the light works. Uh, uh, All right, so basically you can go... Hang on. I got you off the map. Yeah, (laughs) there you go. Is that, is so that there's work? nothing in this room? There's nothing in this room. Yeah, it's a dead end. I'm going to kind of, for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of pull everyone back. So this this corridor down here, you basically found a room that had uh, what the basilisks were kind of munching on and a nest of basilisks. Okay, is was there anything in the room that it came out of? Uh, the room uh, to the south that came out of nothing mm-hmm. other than, than whatever it was feeding on. Okay, let's go back to the north. And not pay attention to the brazers anymore because they just light up for random reasons. They were red herrings. <laughs> All right. I'll lead the way. All right. Take your time. We're just going to kind of move everyone up. As we're walking past the door, do we see anything amassing outside? Uh, yes, you do. You see, as you walk by, you see what seems to be a new piles of, of burned skeletal bones. There seems to be more steam coming off of the eye of the, the statue, uh, as it seems to be some type of a ward uh, protecting uh, this, this area. Cool. Hmm. As long as it's not killing our horses and camels. The horses and camels are, are basically uh, tucked in these little corners. Okay, good. All right. Um... Merch. Forging for I like, <laughs> I, I like that, especially, yeah, okay. Okay, so we're going to move everybody into the next room. As we move into the next room, um, what we see here, I just want to, I have to kind of hit some buttons here to kind of see what you see. Uh-oh, I broke it. We're going to do a quick refresh. I still see. I broke it. There we go. There we go. 
All right. So what we see here is uh, you see uh, this room here has uh, several broken pedestals. Uh, it does feed into uh, two other rooms. You've got one mo room moving to the south, uh, one moving uh, out to the to the east. Uh, this so uh, the east room, and then you have a south room as well. Uh, Ziv, yes. Am I catching these hints of green down at the bottom? Yes, there seems to be water. My friends, there seems to be some foliage this way. Hmm. Not sure if that's good or bad. I, I'm intrigued, water. so now I want to go that way. Okay, alright. So I'm going to move everyone down in this row. I'm kind of taking control perhaps of your characters, so you kind of get... Perhaps this has something to do with the river god. Uh, you safety. you come down and you see uh, you see water. Uh, you also see what looks to be like fish swimming around, like very large fish swimming around. Um, Ziv, as you look about, um, you sent something in the water itself. Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, Thirteen. Your natural affinity towards. Uh, magical hues uh you pick up that there's two sources of magical energy coming from this water uh one here and then one over here um drandall might i have one of those basilisk eyes i'm sorry what was that give me either the basilisk eye or any other meat you might have Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I'll pull out the basilisk guy. I can go back and get some of the basilisk meat if you want. Yeah, quick. I want to get some meat. I want to do a two-part check. One, see if this is acid. Two, see if these fish eat it. Okay. All right. Very quickly. So you go back. You you cut off some of the basilisk. Uh, you bring it back. Uh, you throw a piece of the basilisk in there. The the, the fish seem to swim away. Uh, but it is it is water. Um, the green hue looks to be some type of plankton or something that's growing in there. Um, but it does look like I, water. Ziv, do these magical sources move around, or are they stationary? I'm actually going to turn magic awareness on to where I can zero in on it. You zero in on it, uh, and what you see is you see the form of the magic uh, R's in there, and what you see in the water are, are two swords, one quite large, probably the same size as the one you're carrying, and then a smaller blade, possibly a long sword. Do I see the bottom Ziv. of this? Yes. Ziv. Wait. I'm going to pull out my bats and have them go retrieve the swords. And you can do that. Um, the bats go out. They, 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 the spectral bats go. They fly around. They drop into the water. Uh, they retrieve the two uh, blades. Uh, a long sword and a great sword has been retrieved from the water. Mage hand with the bats. I love Good it. Stuff. Awesome. That's awesome. A long Dude, sword uh, and a great I... sword? A long sword and a great sword. These are rolled up by Headstone and Sunshine. I want to dip nice. my hands into the water and see if I sense anything or see if it's... The water is cool. Nothing seems harmful. No. All right, there's a staircase on the other side. I've done all my investigating. I'm going to... Lay, lay my feet over into the water like I'm going to let myself down. You let yourself in. The the fish kind of swim, and you notice that they kind of disappear into, like, underground, like either they're under rocks or they're, they've kind of swam out of here. Uh, it just looks like, it looks like a, just some type of reservoir or something that's in here. Is it over my head, or am I, like, out of it? You're out of it. It's probably three to four feet deep. I'm going to ask Z uh, Gaz if he wants a if he wants a ferry. <laughs> either that or I can... Either that, or I could tuck you like a football and walk across the ceiling, because that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe you carrying me would probably be a better option. I'd also like, though, if I could, if we could just stay here for a second and, and, and let me touch these blades for just for just a couple of minutes. Mm. I'd like to uh, see what the if these blades, maybe these blades will talk to me finally. I'd like to use my identify on one of the blades. Which one, the long sword mm. or the great sword? Try the great sword, because if Ziv needs to give the great sword away, he'll have a backup. Okay, excellent. So let's do, uh, 
size does matter. Um, so we will go <laughs> with the. Uh, uh, as you as you as you as you call upon the magic of the river spirit um you 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 kind of sense this weapon's use in the past uh, battling monsters of old uh you know that it has a name the name of the blade is corpse slayer it is a plus two great sword and it particularly likes to attack undead in fact it deals an additional d8 damage versus undead I, um, new sword I, is friend you have galvin, galvin and now corpse slayer relationship with galvin ended Corpse Slayer is new friend. Art school girlfriend. Corpse Slayer. Calvin's <laughs> going on the back. Right? We, we can still talk, but we're not we as have, close as we used to be. He has a status update on his on his weapon social media. Uh, <laughs> not you. It's not you. It's me. It's, 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 uh, well, I will say nothing undead is allowed in here. So, well, you might. But it's plus. Ooh, oh, I thought that was plus two to undead. It's just plus two. It's a plus two greatsword. Oh, sorry, Galvin. Sorry. You, you, <laughs> you're on the back burner. Plus, with a name like Corpse Slayer, it's got to look cooler, you know? Right, right, I mean, right, It's right, got, right, like, right. skulls and stuff. Like an 80s <laughs> death metal band. I love it. Yeah. Is it, is it Corpse Slayer with, like, a, a K and, like, <laughs> it's got an umlaut uh, over, the, over the O? All right, all right, all right. So, uh, do you want to do anything with the the other sword as well, or move on? I, yes, I would. Yes, okay. I would if if I can. Yeah. So we'll take another few minutes. Um, now, this would count as a short rest if the other party wants to use anything for the short rest. That can you use a hit die in short rest? Yes, you may. I think one hit die. Is... You can do them one at a time. So they're gonna take a short rest at the other side of the water as as. As our little gnome, Gazmir, is identifying the two blades, uh, they will rest up, put some bandages on from their basilisk encounter uh, before we move on. Uh, as you identify the other blade, you find it is a plus one longsword. I guess we'll take it. Ooh, Please. Ziv rolls a 13 for his hit dice bonus. 10 plus 3, so he heals for 13 during his short rest. I'm full healed. Uh, Durandal, do you want to do any short rest healing before we move on? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I am I'm 9 nine short. Let me roll 1 and see. Okay. What do I have? A D10? It's a D10. D10 plus your con save. Or plus your con mod. Okay, so this will be plus 1. Okay. Uh, you heal for 4. You want to use another one? Yeah. You heal for there 8. There we go. So you use 2 of yours up. Uh, and you heal up. Now, remember the rules that we have. You don't heal during up uh, to full during a long rest. You have a number of hit dice to use per day for healing. Uh, right. Hasn't come up too much. All right. As we get moving, uh, you Ziv, as you heal up, you kind of move to the to the next room. As we move into the next room, uh, we're kind of just kind of pushing forward here. Uh, you come into a room that has uh, several uh, sarcophaguses and other statues moved about the room. Uh, you see what looks to be six sarcophaguses and another four statues that are moved about the room. Do any uh, of the sarcophagi have markings similar to Galvin? Uh, as you walk in, what you see on each of the the sarcophagus is on the headstone of each one of them, on, on like the, the basically the, the the top of each one of them is the same symbol that you saw that is made up of the amulet that you are carrying. I'm gonna reach back and take a hold of Galvin and be like, "What are we looking for?" Yes. No, these are these are not my my former master. These are his servants. His his warrior friend. We must keep going. This is good. We are getting close. I can feel his spirit is strong. It is still here. Okay. Um, we could investigate this, but I really feel like this being a holy place. Not this is what you see on the front. That's on the front of these uh, yeah. sarcophagi. Right. And then this yeah, is the right. amulet. I know there's probably good things in there, but I don't want to disturb. Nope. I'm good gonna river continue spirits. Continue this way. 
Okay. As you uh, move forward, uh, what you do, peering up the steps, uh, Ziv, you're tall enough to see that it seems to open up into a larger room. And as you get into the larger room, um, you do, uh, as you walk up the steps, you do see a, a larger, like, like pillars of moving up, almost like the, like a, like a mini pyramid inside here. And on top of that is another sarcophagus. Yes. This is him. We're here. I guess I'll head towards the stairs. Return me. Return me to my master. Okay. Going up this way. As you, back behind me. as you, as soon as you hit the steps, uh, you turn around and look. Uh, a brazier behind you. This, uh, like a large, like almost like like a fire pit or forge lights up. Uh, as, it, as a fire kind of like illuminates the room behind you. Uh, as you do that, the light kind of cascades into the room itself, illuminating the, the center of the sarcophagus, which looks almost lesser than the ones you saw before. It's not as ornate as the sarcophagus as you saw before. It's uh, it's meager in design. I'm going to... Gaz, come, come take a look at this. <clears throat> um... I, I want I want to take a look and um, see if there um, if there's any uh, symbols or anything else that I can um, that I maybe have come across. You, you um, st- see the same symbol as the amulet. Is it an indentation? Yes. I'm gonna take the amulet off and see if I can get it to fit. Uh, it does fit into the sarcophagus itself. As soon as you do that, light uh, begins to emanate. Uh, as it, all, all around the corners of the, the sarcophagus, uh, light up as well. And uh, you can feel like this, this the whole room begin to shake a little bit as the, the, the top of the sarcophagus uh, begins to slightly move open. As it moves open, you look in, and the only thing that you see on the inside is dust. Oh. I'm going to take Galvin and lay it inside. As you take the blade out and you lay it down, um, the sand inside of the dust inside begins to, to kind of coalesce and begins to take form. What you see is a hand coming out of the, the sand itself, reach up and grab the, the hilt of the blade. And as you do that, you see it turns from sand as you see a uh, flesh as it comes out, a hand, uh, large, it, larger than perhaps your own as this large hand comes out the three of you take a step back as light begins to come out of the sarcophagus as you see this hand coming out uh, grasping the blade another hand comes out grabs the side of it and you see this this being pull himself up out of of this as the sand kind of pulls it back the divine energy the light uh, kind of comes back in, and as this this giant being comes back, you see the head of this being come out. As the head forms, you see these two giant horns uh, begin to grow out, and the long like snout come out at the end of it. As you see this giant minotaur uh, begin to form and stand out of the sarcophagus. As he kind of looks about the room, you see that his brown uh, a fur uh, kind of like kind of like, kicking as he kind of looks around. And he goes, mm, "Where am I?" I don't know, my good friend, but your sword wanted to be returned to you, so we have brought it back. Galvin! Galvin, you... you're always a good companion. Well, uh, might I have your name? Uh, I'm Ziv. Ah, uh, Drake. Drake is my name. Knew it! I knew it! Knew it! Oh! This amulet. I don't want to take the amulet from the... the lid of the casket and I say, is this yours as well? Oh, yes, yes. And he takes the amulet and uh, he puts the blade down. He puts the amulet on. And as he puts the amulet on, uh, he begins to, to, to change form and to shrink down uh, from this monstrous minotaur form into what looks to be a human with long red yeah. hair. Oh, this is amazing. And uh, he goes, oh, he looks around and he goes, yes, yes. Well, what's happened? Is Octopot Is he still around? Who? Octopot. Oh, he's he very sleep. much here. <sighs> and we'd like to kill him if you would as well. <laughs> I, I have knowledge from the beyond. I I now know how to defeat him. We must find and give him what he is searching for. Oh from his soul. Yes. He searches for it. It is the great folly of this world. He searches 
for what makes him vulnerable. We get it back to him, and we can kill him. That makes a perverse kind of sense. Yes. I know where it's at. You know? Yes. It is in the belly of that kraken, the sand kraken. We will hunt it. Oh, did, well. Did the god, did Pelor send you on a divine quest to find me? Have we ever heard of Pelor? Yeah. No. Actually, this little guy right here sent us. His name is Gaz. He kind of likes... Uh... He, he, and he, he looks down and he sees the the uh, the little gnome and he goes, Ah, oh, yes. Are you... Are you a follower of, of the sun god, Pelor? I am a believer of the true old, the true old gods, the river god and the sun god that is not... <gasps> Wait, has, has wait, named. wait, the river god sent you. <laughs> he's not a god. <laughs> he's he's one of my servants. Dinahair was his name. Dinahair was his name. He sent you. I do this immediately. And I bow. Ah, oh, yes. Dinahair. Your patron has a name now. Yes. It's fortuitous. Come, come. As he's standing there, he's still, still naked. Uh, he looks about, he goes... We must find some armor and, and rally forces. We will we will hunt this kraken. We will. There is a room before us that had some sarcophagi. Those were some of my followers as well. We will see what is left of them. Come, come. And as he says that, uh, the light uh, begins to shake in the room. And as the light begins to shake, you see the bard, Marcus, uh, telling the story. And he goes, and that is where we will pick up next time as we will... Find out how Drake and his his companions began to hunt the Kraken. Thank you all for joining us tonight as we will pick up our story next time. Uh, be sure to tip your waitress on the way out. Uh, and thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, and with that, we will end our episode of, of, of Masters of Dread. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.